Uh, uh, Crafty for $20 says the best idea you, Kevin, came up with is the Dog Boy Squad. Is that the best idea? Kevin's probably like, you know, I've come up with a lot of good ideas. That's the best one. <laughs> but uh, that piece of art inspired my Dirty Dozen Dog Boy group for years. Riffs will always be fond memories for the goodest of dog boys doing bad things. Well, thank you for the $20, Crafty. That's awesome. And by the yep. way, I'm that wearing that shirt. Opened up a giveaway. Yeah. Where am I? There you go. Yep. That's what already is talking about. Yep. <laughs> Classic. And and to be fair, he's not lying. He talks about it all the time on our Discord. So yeah, yeah, uh, I know, I know, I know him and his dog boys. But just so everybody knows, at the end of the live stream, we will have one giveaway, uh, two twenty-five dollar gift cards. Now that uh, we have uh, passed a hundred dollars, so thank you very much, to everybody who's uh, super chatting. Well, let's let's go ahead and look at the other chats. You want you like, want to hit uh, okay. the dollar? Okay. Just a thank dollar. you. Just a dollar. Hey, you know what? I'll take a dollar. I used to do anything for a dollar. <laughs> Does Palladium have a chance to gain media cover media coverage okay uh advertising budget he could be talking about some kind of advertising budget yeah i don't know what that means i don't uh, want him to waste his two dollars well yeah but we, we can ask i mean uh well we want to do more advertising wanna... budget does palladium have if any a shitty one right now. Uh, All right. <laughs> that's, you know, as is standard in the industry now, that's one of the big reasons yeah. that we moved to Kickstarter. That, yeah. that is a, a way to get yeah, that. You're right. You're right. That, that, is, that is free media coverage. Yeah, you're right. And we want to do more. We want to do more in social media. Again, we don't want to just jump out and do something half-ass. Um, you know, we're talking to people. In fact, we got a guy lined up that we'd love to bring on board. Um, can't afford him yet, but you know, he wants to come on board. We want him to come on board. It'll happen in within the next year or two. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing is we're doing a lot of little things. Yep. You've got to walk before you can run. Sometimes you got to crawl before you can walk. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, for instance, people may have noticed um, with the weekly update, um, it looks a little different, like just slightly. Um, we're using MailChimp now, um, yep. which is mm -hmm. pretty much the industry, yep. leading industry um, way to get your, your, your newsletters and stuff like that out there. Um, as opposed to using some old software that, you know, that yeah. Palladium was using for a long time with our own servers and stuff. And it's just, it's just, it's better. And we, as we, as we're, 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 you know, all these little things that we're doing with the layout, um, it all adds which, up. it's all yep. gaining yep. momentum, you know, going to Kickstarter, doing all these things. That's, it's all building towards that. But yeah, that's why we're also doing things like, um, you may notice that we are posting, the links to the weekly update on Facebook and Instagram, you know, we're, we're trying to just change. There's a lot of little things we can change that really have a big, a, you know, a, a lot of impact for a little bit of effort. And we're, we're I've been to trying to interrupt heathen now. dogs riff segments by uh, uh, shouting out the weekly update as well. And some of our videos, <laughs> like he'll be in the middle doing something. Like, oh, by the way, the weekly update from Palladium <laughs> Like and we appreciate it because we really much, put a lot of yeah. effort into the weekly yeah. update. It's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, I can't read it. It's way too long for me to go through all of it, but I like the fact that you, the, the core ideas are on top and we'll coolly discuss what's going on. The yeah, Christmas the and July and, and the closing yeah. thoughts at the end. Yeah. yeah. All right. And then we have uh, patriotic gestalt with just $10. He does that quite, but that's a thank you. But uh, patriotic gestalt has been uh, donating yeah. to us for quite a while. So thank you very much. Patriotic gestalt. Really do appreciate that. And then we have GM noob again. Uh, talking about his stepdaughter. Stepdaughter watched my Rifts group for months. Her very first game will be after the bomb. Palladium has yes. a young generation in the works. Yeah. Nice. Glad to hear it. So, uh, and that wait, there's 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 one more. Oh wow, there's more. Okay, there's one more. I, I've this, been really this, bad. This, I've only been looking at the big funny. ones. This one's just funny. Three D four or two D six. Two D six. I don't want to step on the D four when I actually drop it. Okay. Come on! It depends. There, it, it it doesn't say in what context would you choose. So, would you like better three D four two D six, and then say what? I like two D six because I feel like you know they're bigger numbers. I like the way the dice roll. Okay. So yeah. I, I I I like two D six. Um, I don't two D four or the one D four or two D four. I just I don't know. They kind of just clunk. <laughs> I get it. I get it, Sean. Well, I mean, if you're playing Savage Rifts 3D4, uh, you have a better chance of having one of your damage dice explode. So mm, yeah, that's true. That's that's a there's actually a mechanical difference. Well, there, there is a slight mechanical difference here. I mean, yeah. there's 
you got a, a, a tighter spread of your probability for more consistent damage output with 3d4 but with savage rifts it can mean that either a weapon can be really underwhelming when it hits or it could be if you get a little lucky it could be pretty neat so um, i'm disappointed the battletech side of you didn't come out well, you know, I, I like rolling, you know, whole buckets of dice too. Two <laughs> D six battle tech. I look at what I roll seven. I hit the center torso. Got it. All right. Well, again, <laughs> as far as palladium goes, three D four is better. Kevin, you're just wrong. <laughs> because uh, uh, if rolling three D four and two D six, sure, both of them max out of twelve, but three D four has a higher average. Sure. And the the more dice you roll, the closer you are to that average with a total now 2d6 is more at, likely to roll the maximum damage and if you roll a natural 20 then you get to double it. that that's great <laughs> so if you're but, really chasing the maximum no no you're, you're you're chasing the aggregate man you don't, you don't live for the highs what are you what are you a drug dealer no <laughs> yes yes <laughs> i mean games are a dopamine hit right <laughs> fair enough um, but, I do uh, have a, I do have another big super chat when you're done. Numbers, if you're looking for specific high target numbers, the higher number die is the one you want to go for, obviously. But uh, if, if you if you're just looking for to add them up, then the more dice you roll, the usually the higher the average. So it's going to be. So uh, Flady Gaming really for twenty dollars says I agree with Crafty. My name Flade was the first Rifts character and a dog boy. Must uh, most underrated book ever path of the storm people please go out and buy it go out and buy path of the storm so well, other book that, that people who love dog boys you got to get is um coalition Man. manhunters yes there's yes. all kinds of cool new stuff in there yeah. and a, a whole dog, dog boy a uh, whole dog boy comic the comic strip yeah yep tons of new dog boy stuff in there and that's just a good book i mean it's it's like this coalition society book. A lot of people don't realize it talks well, a lot. It, about it is it is a good book, but the but the best coalition book is Heroes for Humanity. I mean, if <laughs> if, if if you're playing a, a coalition campaign, having that book just makes you feel like like you know I'm gonna be a general someday. You know, like, this is gonna be great. I'm a I'm a star on the rise, bitch. That's what I do. <laughs> So you bought right into the Emperor Pro Sex propaganda. Sounds exactly. like well, you know, just eat that up. Eat that up. You know. Oh, it, it's propaganda it's hilarious, man. Right. I can sit back, whether it's on Discord or whether it's on one of our videos. As soon as he starts talking about the coalition, I can sit back because it's him versus chat constantly. Like <laughs> coalition, the bad guys. And, and they don't it, understand the coalition of good guys. They don't get it. And I'm I'm go I'm trying to go door to door to sell it. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna sell it, and I'm gonna get their hearts and minds. Door to door. Everyone's gonna know <laughs> coalition way is the right way, and uh, you know, coalition Lasmo was great. right, he just drew the wrong conclusion. The problem here's what I'm scared of. Here's what I'm scared of Kevin is gonna listen to this, and Sean is gonna be sitting there like, you know what, maybe, maybe he makes a point. Maybe we've written them too nice. See, I see the coalition as the result of humanity's fear. I see it's like, you know what? It could possibly happen. Not that they're the good guys, but I understand why it exists. Right. I want it to stay that way. I'm scared that his proselytizing is going to have Kevin and Sean back there going, all right, how do I make them even more evil? Oh. I got to explain to Sean or to, to Heathen Dog that they are the worst. Thing. Well, I mean, it's uh, there, are, there are also some Star Wars fans that think Vader and the Emperor were right. So, um, you know, it happens occasionally. But I, I do think that that's one of the things that I've always thought was really great about the coalition and the way that Kevin wrote them is that it's plausible. You understand why their motivations are why they are. Mm -hmm. And they think they're the good guys. Yeah. Right. And and that that's a good villain. That's the hallmark of a really, really well done villain that's going to stand the test of time, too. You mm -hmm. know, it's not so flash the pan. Oh, he was just e I mean, we've all seen those movies where he's like, why is this guy doing this? stuff? I don't know. He's evil. You know he's he's crazy. Yeah. You know it's like, but but no, with the with the coalition, you can really understand the 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 mindset. Um, you know, and and I think that that kind of nuance is is really what makes riffs riffs. Right. So. I mean, uh, for for example, like I'm sad Heath Ledger is dead because he was a great Joker, but you can't reprise that role because Joker's just crazy. I mean, he's great for one movie, but you don't get any long term staying power with just crazy. There's got to right. be something else, and right. with the with the coalition, they're not they're not crazy. They're 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 not out of their mind. They're 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 not 
seeing the world differently than everybody else. No, they see the world, everybody else. They may come to different conclusions right? and how to go forward, but it's based in reality. It's based in what happens. You know, big giant bug kill all people. People rise up, kill giant bug. That seems logical, right? I mean, what's wrong with that? And, uh, you know, sure, it is a giant bug, and and you, you want people to want to kill it, so you make you make it so everyone hates the giant bug. The giant bug wants to eat you, right? So everyone hating it seems natural. It seems natural, you know? And like, to be I, fair, I that know, giant bug know. wanting to eat you isn't inherently evil. No, it's not. It's just a giant bug doing giant bug shit, right? That's all it is. But, <laughs> but you know, you don't want to get eaten, so you got to kill it. No, no, I want to understand the giant bug's feeling. Shut up! <laughs> You know what the giant bug's feelings are? It's hungry. That's, that's <laughs> what it is. It's goddamn hungry. Well, what about what about the intelligent ones? What what about you know what about uh, dragons stuff like that? Like dragons, you know, we we grew up historically dragons eating our people and our and our livestock and and burning our villages down. That's what we know about dragons, right? Every book says the damn same thing. It's all smokish. <laughs> Right, it's all it's <laughs> all that. So, are are you gonna sit down with a dragon and have dinner? No, man. No, well, you're either gonna stay away or you're gonna kill it if it comes to your town. You're gonna try. The science plants have pain response. I still eat them. I have no compunction. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Don't you hear them screaming? I don't eat. Nobody should eat vegetables. Eat Nobody animals. Should eat vegetables. At least they're dead right. first. <laughs> yeah, you, you you can't eat vegetables and you can't eat meat because now all of it feels pain. So right. what are you gonna do? I don't know, eat yeah, astronaut yeah. ice cream all day, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, just dairy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're talking about Kickstarter. Uh, yeah. And two questions I have. And, and one, I don't want to dive too deeply into the weeds because I don't think it matters that much. But we've had some folks, they're like, well, I'm not going to back back them on Kickstarter. Companies shouldn't be using Kickstarters. And, and I'm one of those weird people out there that as a consumer – as somebody who doesn't have anything on Kickstarter, and I don't care about Kickstarter one way or the other. Some people use Indiegogo, use Kickstarter, use Give, uh, Give, Send, Go. I don't care. I'm not. I'm talking about crowdfunding as a whole. I just see it as the way forward, man. But there are some folks out there be like, nope, Palladium's gone to Kickstarter. They shouldn't be doing that. They're blocking well, the little guy. Yada yada. I saw that with the. What's a company mean? What's a little guy? Define yeah. that for me. Because yeah, here's the deal: most people don't understand this. If we didn't have a warehouse. We would play him would be me and Kev and Wayne, yeah. right? Because we have a web store and, you know, he helps with uh, do yeah. layout and run a lot of that stuff. I mean, we are the little guy, right? So I don't know how we get any littler. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> unless, unless I just quit again and it's just Kev. I, I think, you know, <laughs> I think one, one of the cool things is it, it, it's sort of a blessing and a curse is I think our stuff is so good, so polished, so well done. That everyone assumes we're much larger than than we are, which no, is it, nice. In nice. this instance, ignorance is a compliment. <laughs> that's, <Yeah. laughs> that's right. And, um, but yeah, right now there's there's like six of us and, and another six or eight freelancers. That that's not a big, yeah, well, I mean, it's not a big company. We are a little company. We are pretty and much. I'm sure. I'm sure was at least two of those part. people are admin and of some of some kind. Um, yeah, Kevin and Sean. <laughs> You know, too too much. If that's one of the things as we grow and, and rebuild the company, we want to bring in more people. But even, even at our even at our peak, we had I had sixteen employees and like thirty five freelancers. Um, wow, that that's not a huge company. No. I mean, we're not General Motors. We're, we're sure as hell not Google or Amazon. We're smaller than a car dealership. Yeah, mm. you know, your your average car dealership is is five to fifteen million dollar company. That that's Garage Seven Eleven has more employees than Palladium, so I mean seriously, I'm I'm not I'm you know it's not a joke, it's true. So I mean I've run, <laughs> you know, you know mall retail and stuff, you know, like we're we're a small company. And, 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 and as you said, Max, it is sort of the wave of the future. Also, the, the mm -hmm. reason you see bigger companies using it as well is because um, it, it it it's a viable platform for selling and advertising it's just you find that it also helps you gauge interest or is that not even something you care about no absolutely it, no it's... i mean look look, look we, we literally could not have done this without kickstarter and 
we probably would have been very careful. We wouldn't have known how many of these to order, right? Because print run, like I said, we don't we don't have some. And books cost a lot to print. Like, and I mean, we spend a lot of money just sending to the printer, right? So, um, you know, it's it's especially lately, um, past few years. So it's we really need to know those numbers. It really helps us to have have those numbers well and is a, a sort of a community thing and as a advertising vehicle and community vehicle it creates a sense of excitement and fun that you can't necessarily do in other mediums i mean we could just say i mean a great example is in sloth jungles is coming out you know we hyped it up in our book and stuff and it's selling really well but if we had kickstarted this, we'd probably sell two or three times as much. And the more money we make, the more we can grow the company, the more product we can produce, the, the better more we can pay our artists. The better yeah, the better the product the looks. You know, it's all interwoven. And I don't think people really think about that. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. Sometimes there's that just uh, anti corporate or whatever. And it's like, well, what do you want? Do you want Palladium to be putting out really quality products? Right? Do you want us? you know continually pushing the bar forward well, that's how we have okay. to we have to be able to move forward there's it's there's only so many man hours that we, that you know that that kevin and i can do and and we're already like pushing those boundaries and so, it's it's funny he used the term anti-corporate because we're kind of anti-corporate in the sense of i think when people think of corporations they think of that shareholder right the cold heartless we don't give a fuck about our customer base it's all about the money show me the money and we're not that way. I mean, yeah. we're, we're a corporation, but we're very much focused on fans and fun and family. Cool. And, and we're not giving up the reins to a board of directors or right. investors, right? And, and, um, we've, and, we, and we've, we've, we've had those opportunities. But we said no. We said and I, and I can say from talking with no or said only silent. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Have, have you had investors that, that have come to you and have you just said no or said yeah but you got to be a silent back of the bus investor well, we no, no we said no we said just no straight up no we, we, we had we had a big 14 billion dollar video game company reach out to us and and pitch us up about how we're a gold mine which i agree um now they're going to give both of us like platinum plated jobs and and, and we're going to keep all this and right and, 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 you know and we can keep running the company the way we want to but right off the bat they start talking about this and that and stock folders and all this other shit and i'm like no we're not going to do this in fact it was fun never it was sell just, your vision that that is well, one yeah. thing that i hear across the board like one of my favorite realms from dungeons and dragons is Dragonlance, but the people who wrote Dragonlance, created it inspired it are not actually part of it unless watsi goes and says here you're allowed to be part of it again and yep. it's crap compared to what it was yep. and you know, i don't expect you to talk badly about another company but i mean that's that's what happens when those people come in i if i heard that you guys sold to investors or whatever i'd probably freak out myself just because i'm like there's something special about how you guys handle this company thanks Thank you. And, and well that's but, why i brought sean in because he has those same values he has those this, the same approach he wants to see the same things where well, i've talked again i've talked to other people who wanted to be a partner or manager or whatever, and it became very clear very quickly that they don't understand what the magic is here, what what our relationship with the fans. And you know, and I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of business people who probably listen to this and going, oh, they're just a little mom and pop company doesn't know what they're doing because they could take it to this level and that For level. For forty years. And, 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 but I mean, there are ways you could make Palladium really big. Uh, like if we had gone with that $14 billion company, there's a chance that they would have either completely squandered an opportunity or we'd be the next Marvel Comics, except we wouldn't really have any real control or say not over what we're kind. doing. We might not necessarily like what they're doing with our properties. It'd be big. It could be worth a billion dollars or just some small time, you know, outfit by comparison. But it's also, what do you want? I mean, how much money do you need? I want to have enough money to live comfortably and not have to worry and, and then be able to do whatever the fuck I want to do for my fan base. Mm -hmm. and, and stay and, true to the vision. And stay, exactly. Well, that's why there's the rub. There's the rub. That, that's, the, that's the thing with the owning a business that you love. Owning a business that you love means you have to give up money. 
You have to give up seemingly free money because you don't want it to change. You don't want, you know, you have your vision. And, and if, if your company went down another path, you wouldn't be able to sleep at night. You feel like you betrayed everyone who, everyone who loves you. So you give up that bag. I mean, I couldn't do that. I mean, not really <laughs> give up the bag. <laughs> I mean, the, the thing is, is I'm, I'm, I'm here because I also know that Palladium has a lot of potential, yeah, right? We're going to make piles of money here <laughs> and, 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 and things are ramping up. But like, for instance, what my favorite compliments though, Max are the little things. And you're saying, Hey, it's still the Palladium style, but I really mm -hmm. like the layout. I mean, this is stuff that we've worked really hard on and I've worked really hard on, you know, I, I don't come here to try and like change the vision. I'm really glad that you're saying that because that's exactly my goal joining kevin and, and, and you can keep your company culture and stuff and right. still be huge a great example is and most people don't realize this the mars company is in the mars candy company sure. they're a privately owned company they're worth they're worth like i forget if it's eight or 15 billion dollars okay you know it, well, then do that <laughs> yeah, man. Why did you make candy bars? <laughs> now, now you sound like like uh, my girlfriend Kathy. Well, why don't you do that? Because <laughs> I like I writing. Don't know anything about candy, woman. It's pretty super pop too popular. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I've talked about quite a bit more on the Friday show than in the Sunday one is I talk about usually when things get too big or when things are made for the masses, they're dumbed down. And you know, again, not to hit on other companies out there, but like I'm not no. a fan of the modern D and D, but it sells so well. That's not necessarily a good thing. World of Warcraft, my God, so many people loved it. I thought it was the end of MMORPGs, and to this day, I mean, there are some people. Who still play because it 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 gave up what made that niche, if you want to call it that, special. Whether it's hardcore mode or whatever your terms are for it, but when when you make it of, uh, I don't want to say accessible. Games are accessible to everybody, but when you cater to everybody, you end up catering to nobody, yeah. and that's how I see a, a lot of these. But it's popular, yeah. But it's is it good? And if there's one thing I can say about Palladium with all the little warts and so forth that we like to pick on the Palladium peel, you know, some of the layout, you know, whatever in the past, there's, perfect. you know, that when you read it, there's something special there. And I can say for, to folks out there in talking with Kevin and Sean a little bit behind the scenes and some emails and so forth, that they really do care about the fans, that they do really care that they put out a good product. And it's not just them sitting here talking about this stuff. It's one of the reasons why we keep as much as we can, they don't pay me to shill uh, Palladium. They don't pay him to shill Palladium. We do it because we... That. What's that? I ain't got money for that. Well, you, you said you had a little advertising budget. I think maybe yeah, we can... Well, I'll take it. <laughs> but, I mean, but, I've already said I'll sell out. I mean, I, I'm just waiting for... <laughs> I'm just waiting for Raid Shadow Legends and Manscaped to come knocking on Max's door. I'm gonna take that deal behind his back. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt the stream a couple of times, and I'm gonna get that money. <laughs> Please don't take off your shirt. Please don't take off your shirt. But, 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 off the, but the truth of the matter is, in, in what I'm putting out there, is the fact that we res we respect that, and because you respect the fans, if you respect the people the, the people who enjoy your game, which obviously it is that you do. No matter what the onesies and twosies, there's always haters. We've got our own as well. Or the you're you're go you're going to continue to have that loyalty again. Forty years. If you look at Dungeons and Dragons, the 800 pound gorilla, is it the same as it was 40 years ago? No. If people can argue that well, Palladium went from first because we do have some people on our Discord that love first edition, don't love the second edition stuff. We have some people who love the yep. We have some people who love the second edition stuff and don't like the first edition stuff. But they're still so comparable, <laughs> like 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 they're in, they're really interchangeable with with very minor tweaks that that you can do to it. It's the same game for forty years, and you're still here in business doing your thing. The, you can't I don't argue that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know of, of another game system that has gone on for four decades and and hasn't changed how it feels. Hasn't changed so much that it feels like a different game than when it started. Palladium, it feels exactly the same as you know, mechanoids. Like that Rifts feels feels yeah. the same as mechanoids. It does. Right. It feels the same. Yeah, we don't yeah. want that to ever change. Yeah, nothing else. Shadowrun? No. No. Right. No, completely different game. Completely different game. Oh, yeah, from first to whatever edition oh, yeah, it's on now. Yeah, yeah, First yeah. and second to whatever it is, fourth or fifth that's on now. It's it's a it's a completely different game. Even even Earth Dawn has started to change. Oh, Earth Dawn's got cool. major changes to yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it doesn't feel like the same game. Nope. You know, the the D D obviously, you know, 
basic first, second edition felt like the same game. After that, no, different game. Completely different game. Palladium's the only one that if you if you did if you last played it 15 years ago, you can still just play. You can that's just true. Play. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. very true. Yep. Yep. So all right. Um I, I want I want to step into one other big topic before we hit some questions and so forth, because you know we're gonna tangent because what we all do, we're nerds. Uh is it well first of all, anything that you left on the table about the Titan Robotics Kickstarter? Buy the book. Okay. By the book, <laughs> please support our Kickstarter. We're trying to do what we think is the right thing for the fans okay. and for the company. And so we really appreciate those fans who who do jump in and support us, even if they wouldn't normally back a Kickstarter. Well, and the people who support us after the Kickstarter. And afterwards. We've had oh, so many. It's wonderful to see all the orders coming in now yeah. that the books are available. Yeah. Um, and again, if you if there's if there's any issues, please let us know. We're 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 yeah. we're we're like very dedicated to making sure that the customer is taken care of, right? That our fans are taken care of. So again, that's, you can't call a lot of companies these days, really. You can call our office, you know, you can you can contact someone on the help desk or through back. Yep. And we're a small team. So, you know, please be patient with us on that level, but we're doing our best and we, we'd love to help you out if you have any issues. So, so moving that forward, you guys are going to Gen Con. Uh, that's mm-hmm. next week. Uh, so what, what are your plans? Just, I'll just do a generic question so you guys can take this wherever you want. What are your plans and how is Titan Robotics going going to you know mix into that fold as well? But what are you, what are your overall plans for Gen Con other than selling product? <laughs> well, there's a lot of things actually. You know, one of the cool things about Gen Con is that we we do get to meet a lot of fans, as in like like four or five, six hundred people mm-hmm. uh, over the three or four days, and uh, we get a lot of valuable feedback. Um, and that's not necessarily even just all, we love your shit. You know, we, we, we appreciate when people come up and say, Hey, I really like this, but I thought you could have done this better or done this differently. Or have you ever considered this? Or have you considered that? Um, as some people know, uh, we really listen to that. Uh, there was a guy at, even though Sean had said it to me earlier, for some reason it resonated when some guy at, at the Palladium open house said, I wish you'd re-release the the compendium oh, yeah. uh, of modern weapons. That is my best friend in the world. Whoever said that, he's my best friend. <laughs> well, I said it even before that guy. He did. He was like, hey, that's a great idea. We're going to consider that. And Sean's like, fucking said that to you six months ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we, we actually yeah. talked about yeah. it the last time you guys were here. Yeah. We, we talked about it then. You know, in the same yeah. thing with all of our other hardcovers, and we've done the hardcover versions of most of our RPGs now. Are, that are, was from fans. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's game elements, characters. Someone sent me a help desk thing, kind of jokingly saying, you know, I, I hope you do a Corgi um, dog boy. <laughs> I think I saw that. Corgis and we love them. Well, I, I, I researched Corgis, and I'm like, hey, I can do something cool with this. So now there's a Corgi dog boy in, you know, Riff's Manhunters. Well, and, and people say things like, we, we love comic books. Can you do more comics? Well, there's a huge comic section in Riff's Manhunters, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we, we really do listen. Um, and, and it's really important that the show, that show is really great for that because yeah. we see so many people in such a short time. It's also great for us to... Um, obviously hawk our wares and sell mm-hmm. books and you need to sell books because I mean it costs a fortune just to go uh, to Gen Con. I mean the the yeah, they keep you know the, the booth it's... alone is like 10 grand and then Whoa. oh yeah it's Whoa. and, 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 and it's then you know you've got hotel I mean hotels you know I, I'm bringing in like six people we got payroll hotel um, food. you know that's another couple of grand and then foods 1500 yeah, to rent a whole 26 foot truck yeah that's that's another 1500 dollars I mean it's crazy Plus expensive gas. but it's worth going because of that feedback mm-hmm. because we make connections we get to talk to other industry people we get to connect with artists uh, find a new artist we get to talk to uh, manufacturers and printers and all kinds of other people it's just a really i mean for us it's just a whirlwind i mean those those we're actually leaving tuesday so we can start setting up tuesday night and then all day wednesday and then it's just a blur after that but so it's, you're networking with both fans and business relationships absolutely well that's that's where i met kevin for the first time in person yeah. was at gen con 2019 
Yeah. Okay. That was just the first time oh, we oh. ever met. Here, here's a good one. Uh, is Gen Con profitable for you? I mean, after you, after what you just said, all of the travel, the housing, the food, and and all of the all of the uh, all of the expense that is involved in in shipping your product to the place, do you make enough money to break even, or do you consider uh, part of the part of the expense a wash because of the people you meet the the uh, the, the the fans and the other professionals, be it artists or writers that you could come across, like is is it kind of like an investment as a loss in that way, or do you just make more money than you spend? That'd be great, right? That'd be ideal. Well, you know, so, sometimes you do. Certainly, back in the old days, we 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 did for for years. Um, it's pretty much an advertising wash, you know. Like we hope we have a good year, and 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 you know maybe we could make some profit. But you know, it, it's but, a lot of it's what 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 my my attorney and I and I, I use this term all the time myself now. What my attorney would call uh, intangible, the intangibles, the intangible mm -hmm. value, and that's you know one of the other intangibles is it's so exciting and it's you get so much love at these events. You know where people are like we love your stuff i love this book you know you hear their story how you know this got them through an alcoholic you know bad parents and or this got them through this or this and that or they just you know i got i've gone on to start my own role-playing company or i'm with video game companies or i'm a filmmaker because your books inspired me and taught me i want to tell stories um so and we get a lot of good feedback like What's going to be in Land of the South Winds or Antarctica? Or I hope there's this or hope they're that. We come back so charged up, that's and awesome. excited about what we're doing. It's it's almost worth it for that. Oh, alone. so you use Gen Con as idea theft? Okay, okay, <laughs> oh, wow. I get it. That's smart. That's <laughs> smart. Sounding board. Uh, <laughs> sounding board. Right, right. <laughs> that that that's what they call it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am evil incarnate. Well, I mean, it's like, you know, we have people that when we did the Cyborgs collection, people on the Kickstarter immediately asked, are you going to do that for, are you going to do something similar for the Splugorf when you do Antarctica? You know? Um, do we get an answer to that question? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, we will. I mean, it's, it was like, wow, that's, I didn't expect people to be so excited about that. And now, wow. with, sorry, sometimes, you know, the fans will ask you about, is this going to be, what does this mean for future products and next, next, next? And that's exciting. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. well, gee, I mean, if if you're excited about that yeah. and you think this is the coolest thing, you know, since sliced bread, then definitely we're going to definitely take that into consideration for sure. So. so uh, you guys can be running any game. Are you going to have time to run any games here? Run Not us game. personal. We got some guys are running some stuff yeah, here and got, there. But okay. yeah, there's a whole bunch of people running stuff, so. That's awesome. Uh, you know, it's funny as I, I can tell you that in all the times I went to Gen Con, I've never stopped by the Palladium booth. I don't know if those were like really? random years you weren't there, if I didn't see because I couldn't, I can't imagine that I wouldn't have because even, even back when I wasn't playing a lot of Palladium necessarily, I still knew about the games. It was, I started with Robotech and TMNT. It's not like I, I just never remember seeing your booth. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. We used to have a pretty big one. What are you uh, talking um, about, we man? We have an eight booth island oh. at, at our peak. I remember. No, no. Uh, when you and I went to Gen Con, what was it? 2011? Oh, we went in four, 11, 15, and we were supposed to go in 20. Okay. I, it was either 11 or 15. I went to the Chaosium booth. I bought a shirt. Mm -hmm. And then and then we went to the Palladium. We, we went to the, the Palladium booth. Did we? Yes. Uh, it was a rando that was behind the thing. It, it, it wasn't Kevin. And uh, oh wow, <laughs> and uh, you were there with me, huh? I do not remember that. I didn't buy anything because I looked around, I got it, got it, got it, got it. Damn it, all right. Ah, <laughs> well, the, the one thing I'll say is we're we're we've gotten through seniority into a yeah. pretty nice position where we're in one of the, in front of one of the main entrances, Who's near, 903, right? 903 yeah. in front of Asthma Day and uh, near yeah. Tops, yeah, so. mm, trading card book. Well, Which I mean, there was a period where we didn't go. Uh, there was like three or four years where we stopped going, which was stupid because we we were at the location where we are now, 
uh, back in like 1999. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we just decided not to go for like three or four years. And then we started back up. So like in 2004, I don't, I don't think we were there. No, that's why it was either 11 or 13. But, but we were there then. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Let's face it. Gen Con is so freaking big. The exhibitors. Oh, I know. I mean, there are places where I'll run into some booth that I like and I better, if I want to buy something, I better, <laughs> better buy, buy it, it now. Cause I'll, I'll never find it again. Yeah. I mean, one, uh, one of the reasons I stopped going was because they changed the rules for the VIGs. Cause I used yeah. to get the VIG pa and if I'm flying from Germany, Cause that's the last two times I went, well, would have been last right. two times, but last time I went, I came from Germany. I, if I can't have a VIG, I'm not going like, like let me pay the extra money. It's like, Oh, well you didn't have it last year. Yeah. I don't go every year. I don't live in Indianapolis. I live overseas. I can't afford to go every year. So I was, I was a little perturbed about that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember when it, when it first moved to, uh, to Indianapolis yep. and I went the first time and I'm like, wow, there's so much space. You know, it's, it's great. But then the very next time I went, like, all the space is gone. Damn it. Yep. <laughs> it's filled yep. up with people. Damn and you it. know how much we love people. I hate people. <laughs> <laughs> Walking behind that guy. Anyway, uh, all right. Uh, well, I, I think that, uh, you know, again, anybody who watches this, you should check out Booth 903. Go check out the Palladium uh, booth there. Talk to Kevin. Give him your ideas. Be nice. Don't throw tomatoes. Gen Con probably won't like that anyway, but uh, you know, give them your suggestions. And of course, you want to say more after the bomb stuff. Forget riffs after the bomb. I'm sick and tired <laughs> of rewriting the coalition as the empire of humanity. There you go. Right. Which, we, which, we got, let's go ahead. We, we got some chat here, some okay. non, non pay chat. It seems like a good, good place to put it out. Raven asks, Is there a way to do mass combat in the Palladium system, whether riffs or fantasy? It's not like there is no capacity for warfare in these worlds. You want uh, like, like armies against armies, you know? Is there, is there a mechanic for that in any of the books? Not, not really. No, yeah, okay. we, we tend to smoke, we tend to focus on uh, skirmishers. That's what that's a role playing really is. You know, it, it's like, you know, a great analogy is a gaming group is going to be Luke and Han and the crew versus this army versus that army. Um, it's almost so, it's almost like a backdrop type thing. It's it's yes. a it's a it's scenery for what's really going on. And now me as a as a game master, when I'm doing it like that, when I'm like, no, I want to focus on this particular part of the battle. I'll just have the battle unfold the way I want it because your actions as a group, especially lower mid level, you really can't affect an entire an entire army against army combat. You know, it's not not until you get higher level do you get that kind of power. So you you handle your stuff and then the uh, the war is going to unfold how it unfolds. And as a game master, I just don't worry about it. I just decide beforehand who's going to win. And, and your surgical strike can have effect for future. Yeah, but yeah, probably won't stuff, affect. but that that combat right there, um, unless you have like meteor swarm or like you know create a black hole or whatever, you're not going <laughs> to affect an, an entire army combat field. I mean, there are ways you can do it, but we don't have them at least at this time. At this time, okay. Yeah. I mean, well, so, uh, so, so, go, sorry, go uh, I'll, I'll say a couple of things. One is going to be some game master advice. Another is just you know a plug for things that I've worked on um, on the dark side with with Pinnacle. Um, but, uh, I will say that, you know, treat it like a, a movie. So yeah. you come in with like an establishing shot, you know, let the characters meet the commanders, yeah. talk about the stakes, maybe the enemy troops that are going to be present, your allies that, you know, just like, I don't know, you could play, uh, when you read the Lord of the Rings books, it's usually about the individual characters mm -hmm. and their place amongst this larger scrum yep. or melee. Um, but it can be really important. You know, you need to knock out this anti-aircraft gun yep. so we can call in air support. You need to knock out this artillery battery yep. um, or, or take out this commander or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold the line right here. This is the crucial point. Um, but, and then, when, you know, zooming in like that can be a lot of fun. Um, I say that sometimes, you know, if you really want to do something big, but usually the players aren't going to be in command of an army. Or something like that they're more like the special forces team or something um right. yeah and uh if you want a really big combat again like think of avengers um yeah you know when they were fighting against you know uh thanos, thanos yeah. and that huge battle it yeah. was you know sure there's a lot of a lot of 
people coming out of portals and whole groups of troops fighting and so but it really came down to the one-on-one -on -one kind of combat yeah. that it broke down into and and that's a good way to, to run that um with with savage worlds they do have a mass combat system which is really good um and uh i think that there's some cool stuff we've got coming in the next boy am i about to drop this yeah sure why not um in in europa um the the next uh savage worlds world uh savage rifts world book um but it looks like we're going to be having i think we're going to have um more detailed information about how um, europa as in the moon or europa as in like the name for the word for europe oh okay 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 yeah, so yeah, uh, I was like, anyways, in space? Oh, no, yeah, there's no, a change. But, but it'll have it has some more broken down rules for if you have this, this, and this, maybe um like do you have air dominance? Do you have the better artillery? Do you have the better entrenchment uh, or the communications and stuff like that? But okay. in general, I don't think you need most of that most of the time. If you really want something to happen, you know, maybe a skill role maybe an operator's skill role to jam enemy transmissions yeah. so that they can't you know get their airstrikes in the right spot that can be just as impactful and that's what the savage worlds when they do the mass battles it really boils down to individual characters making individual skill roles in ways that could narratively affect the battle well that's not that's not rocket surgery you can do that too as a game master right and have a, a, you know a few core skill roles and then describe how that influences yeah. the battle and how that yeah. impacts mm -hmm. what's Absolutely. going on and then and, and that you know it's yeah just don't overthink it don't overthink right. it and, and and that's one of the things that i think that is the key to a lot of the ways that kevin designs a lot of these skill based characters too is make those skills impactful make those roles <laughs> count you know if it's if, if, if it's not dramatic you probably don't need to roll they just cook their dinner right <laughs> Right. As long as they've got cooking yeah. or the, the wilderness <laughs> scout. Hey, guess what? You have a wilderness scout. He's able to do this. Make a skill roll. Okay, you also do this in addition, right? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have. Don't overthink it. Don't don't feel confined because the book doesn't list exactly how to do those things. Right. That's what you're. That's where you're well, there for as a game. It's master. really funny you say that because I, I, this is a topic that I like to address. And what I've found is that a lot of, and I wouldn't even say modern gamers, I, to me, it happened to me in the 90s. Right. There's this weird specificity that we have to have. Paging through the book, like, where's the rule? Where's the rule? I got to have a rule for this. And, and I'm telling you, I, I've heard a bunch of people complain about Palladium in terms of, well, there's no domain play. That's such a D&D &D thing. That's a high level Dungeons and Dragons thing. Like we, Heathen Dog and I, even when we do high level, we don't play domain play. I'm not saying it's bad or nobody should do it, but we don't do that. We're still trying to be the heroes of the story. You know, yep. uh, we're, we're still trying to uh, to be the adventurer, so to speak. I, I yep. want to be in Dragonless. I want to be in Lord of the Rings. I don't want to be the king of a world. I'll do that in a play-by-mail yep. game. But Palladium has a framework, and this is where I think a lot of people lose, lose it, is they don't understand the framework is there. You don't need specific rules for it. Why? What? Because one of your players is going to try to look something up? No, you're the game master. Like, Sean gave a bunch of great examples of how to just just relax just let it happen let the flow make your own d4 chart let's go back to the d4 uh enemy wins uh, down here you win in the middle something a little more gray or yeah. you know whatever plus one we need a plus one to win this battle yeah like, minor, a minor victory you know just keep it simple it doesn't all have to be really complicated now when we do do things like that again i think that kevin and i have had a lot of conversations about that certain games will give you a framework and really, it's just kind of replicating maybe what a good game master might come up with at the time when they need it in their game, right? And so, but yeah, it really all comes down to just focusing on the skill roles, focusing on the story, focusing on the drama that's there. Okay, yeah. speaking of focusing on drama, you know, and, and, groups are and people, right? in, in, in the vein of not taking things seriously, we have Nerdy Ogre with a question. I have a serious question for Kevin and Sean. Pleasure bunnies or sex robots? Go. <laughs> Define pleasure bunnies. I don't know if I can answer the question. First. After the bomb. Oh. It's yep. one of the things that well, that uh, that uh, I, I ripped that page out. <laughs> <laughs> but let's Neither be one for me. I, I kind of prefer humans. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, well, dog had, that wasn't even super chatted and you put that up. I know I had to. I saw it and I'm like, I gotta figure out a way to shoehorn this <laughs> question in. So that's what I did. Okay, now 
I'm going to be super serious for a second about pleasure bunnies and sex robots. So it's going to get weird. All right. It's going to get weird. All right. All right. Okay. (laughs) Pleasure bunnies (laughs) breaks at least two laws. Sex robots breaks no laws whatsoever. Because we already have, uh, we already have pleasure devices. That's exactly what a sex robot would be. But a pleasure bunny. Well, I'm not going to talk about the laws. We, we we can already think of a couple on top of our head, which uh, is a no bueno where we live. So the real answer is sex robot. That's so the real answer. Like the cherry 3000 conversation? Yeah. <laughs> that, yes. that those two. But yes, yes, it is that. This topic came up because we uh, I'm covering a game, uh, the Mutant Year Zero series uh, right. from Free League. And when we did Mutant robot. Mechatron, there are robots in there that are we'll called courtesans. And uh, and so people related back to when we covered after the bomb. So this has kind of been a meme on our, on our channel now. Uh, pleasure bunnies or sex robots? Well, I'm on the sex robot side. If I have, if I only have an A B choice, there's no C my way out of this one. It's uh, it's uh, the sex robots because there's just something really weird. I don't care that they look human. I don't care that they act human. The fact that I know that it's a mutant animal makes me say nope. <laughs> that one. So right. I'm noping right. out of that. Yeah. So it's, anyway, it's, 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 before it's, it's, Kevin and Sean accidentally find the internet went out button, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's uh, let's address some questions, and then when we're done with this, we'll see how your time is, and then whatever you guys want to talk about uh, moving forward. Because uh, again, nerds like to talk, and I've got a lot of things I'd love to talk. About.